uh, Vince Palco talking about building your legacy. Vince is somebody that I met at ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is a wonderful digital marketing company that has taught me virtually everything I know about digital marketing. And Vince was fascinating. <clears throat> he had um, an exhibition within it, but was also called out during the um, conference because he had done some really unique things that the um, owner and the head, the leader of the ClickFunnels uh, group had used. And I looked at that and I was fascinated because I'm very much in tune to, is it the right brain, the left brain? How do we use the whole brain together? And I could see how Vince was using this to really trigger our ability to use the full brain. And so I'm gonna just pause there right now, let Vince introduce himself, tell his story as to how he got started. And then we'll talk a little bit about what is it that Vince does with AdTunes and what can it do for us as we develop our careers and also our legacy. So Vince, it's yours. Well, I wanna first start and thank you so much for allowing me to be uh, on with you and share with your amazing audience uh, kind of what we do here and what we're all about and kind of our different twists on things. And I love that intro, you know, it's, it really is blending the right with the left uh, brain uh, because everyone gathers information differently. Uh, and, you know, we feel that the learning sticks easier when you add that right brain, that visual element. Uh, and we've got data upon, upon data that, you know, speaks to that in marketing, in uh, uh, education for employees, and just in general when you're kind of working one-on-one -on -one with people. So uh, again, thanks so much for being on and fire away with the first question or well, what you would like to do. Then what I'd like everybody to know is how do you get started doing ad tunes cartoons, drawings, to really trigger that message. But what got you moving in that direction? It's so amazingly unusual. <laughs> uh, it's a great question, a, lot, a question that a lot of people ask me. I remember being as a, a student athlete at Bowling Green State University, the big football star, and all the, the media would want to know, well, you're an artist and a football player. I, I just don't get this. Uh, but if we're to go way, way back, uh, I had a mother as an art teacher and uh, who taught me everything I know. And I had a father in sales. He was doing HVA sales and, and um, different elements in that uh, niche. Um, so they created this <laughs> hybrid of someone who is really engaged with art. But then my dad would take me on these sales calls when I was in college and and I would sit in on their lunches, and he probably had me there to you know, brag about it as my son who plays football. But I was a student of both of those uh, environments uh, and themes. Being a student of the game with art, being a student watching, observing my father, you know, just, and it wasn't pushy sales, it was just developing relationships. And, uh, and when I look back, uh, you know, and then see where I've come. They both have influenced me tremendously. So uh, they created this hybrid kid who, you know, loves sales, loves loves art and loves design, loves cartoons. And, uh, and so I was working with a company probably in 2000, uh, 1998 that specialized in visual learning for companies. And they would hire these artists to draw these amazing visual races of cars and boats and things of that nature. And so I worked there for a few years and then thought to myself, you know, I have my own message and I want to share and help people uh, with some of my ideas. And so I struck out on my own and went and uh, I had a mentor at the time named Matt Fury and he and I teamed up to create what is the very first cartoon ad since the Charles Atlas ads. And if your audience might be familiar with that, that's uh, I think uh, how 
uh, you know, guy's on the beach, he's getting sand kicked in his face, and uh, he's a swimpy guy, and he comes back and he uses the Charles Atlas uh, system to get stronger, and he gets humiliated in front of his girlfriend on the beach, but then he comes back and uh, defeats, you know, the guy picking on him. And that was, I don't know, 40s or 50s. Uh, so, you know, they say what's new is old and what's old is new again. We just brought that back out in a comic book strip and it lifted his business. He was a self-publisher speaker and, uh, and the, the main idea, the main intent of that behind all that is just to be different, right? To go against the grain of what uh, most people are doing traditionally uh, to stand out and to kind of build your following. Um, and so that's kind of where I started. Business was great for a while and then business tanked. And uh, this was like around 2008, 2009. And it went through a really challenging period in my life where uh, I was going through a divorce. I had all these kids. I'm trying to kind of build this business and the business is failing and I've got the weight of the world on my back and I don't know what to do and I'm an idea guy and I'm down to my last idea. And essentially I went to a client who I had done work with before to build uh, just cartoon headers on the type, you know, top of websites and things of that nature. I said, Mike, we can visualize your whole uh, 15 minute sales presentation. He's like, what are you talking about? Like cartoons and a PowerPoint? I'm like, no, no, we can draw on every scene. And uh, in that very first, <clears throat> and so he's like, no, and it took like a month to go back and forth with him. And basically at the end of that, uh, he said, okay, I'll give you some money on the upfront to develop it. And it won't be what you're asking for, Vince, but if you beat my control, he had an A, B split test. So the A test or the A control was PowerPoint presentation with narration, just text sliding in and out and versus the ad tune. He said, if you beat my control by 10%, I'll give you a large chunk of change. If you beat it by 20, I'll, be, I'll double it. Wow, so, that's motivating. Yeah. And since I really didn't have much to go on, I took it and I said, let's, let's go. And I had within a week, I had this 15 minute ad tune created and he put it up and he didn't see a 10% increase. He didn't see a 20% increase. Lois, what do you think the increase was? Oh, wow. Okay. When you ask it that way, I'm guessing maybe 60%. It's a good guess. And, and Mike would have been happy as a clam because in his world, he's driving millions of eyeballs to this thing. He just moves the needle a little bit and he's well, living life. So, uh, but that, the actual split test result was 85% over his control that the ad tune be oh, wow. a couple presentation with narration. Same presentation, apples oh, to apples. Wow. Same audio file put into an ad tune creation. And so wow. there's a lot of debate out there on who started this whiteboard craze. And, and, and essentially that is what uh, kicked it all off. And uh, no one was getting the results we were getting in terms of, you know, the, uh, the response from people. Um, and, and so a little bit more to the story, he did some tweaking and testing to it and he saw another 268% bump. So, we 353 percent increased his his um, his sales presentation, and the guy was making a million dollars a month, and we tripled it, just selling a forty seven dollar PDF. So wow. that's how Antune started, and after that, you know, I started paying off bills, and life got a little easier, <laughs> and, uh, and then it was you know just. I could name whatever price I wanted to, you know, in terms of what we do. So, but you know, really it's, it's all around creating a message that can kind of like you said in the beginning, you know, aligns the left brain and the right brain. The drawing keeps people's attention so that you can deliver a marketing message and allow for that message to come through 
without someone saying, don't sell to me, Vince. I don't want to be sold to, you know, it's just a playful, fun cartoon. And you'd be amazed. So many people are like, well, Vince, my business is too serious. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not going to work for me, but we have a lot of affluent clients that are in financial services, insurance, um, technology that understand the power of laying out a visual value proposition so that you can take a 40 minute conversation, boil it down into three minutes and make it extremely effective for sharing within a company and things of that nature. Right. Um, yes, I want to go back to what you were saying just a few minutes ago with what you developed with uh, a visual for one of your companies. And it's something that you've shared with me in terms of how to communicate. And um, one of the things that I have realized when I work with global companies, for example, that is that language is a limiting component because everybody tries to use English. That's sort of our sta stable datum in terms of language. The problem is some of us will have learned English in, in England or Australia or even in different regions of the U.S., and so our use of words varies. And what people go away from meeting sometimes differs in terms of their understanding. And so what I, part of what I love about what you've done with graphics is it hits a part of the brain that, that um, kind of fills in those gaps of understanding. So if you would just share a little bit with people what it is that you've done, because I think it's just, it's brilliant. Yeah, so I think this is a good point to kind of pull up my whiteboard and to speak to what you just shared there. If you think of the word fair, right? Um, to you, an image might come up in your head about what that word means. Right. To me, another image might come up on what that means. To my you know, if I've got uh, a niece who's two years old, that's a completely different image. That might be an image like this. <laughs> right? Yes. And, and so to your point, <laughs> visuals, to, to me, it might be, you know, a black bear, you know, that's running through the woods. And it, now, is that, you know, is that a, a black bear? Is it a, a polar bear? And there's all kinds of different meanings to that word. But when you draw a visual, and let's draw a visual, everyone knows what this is, right? It's a teddy bear. And so the, the beautiful part about the visual language that supports the written word is we've had clients from all over the world and in, translated to many different languages. And the foundation is kind of that visual um, canvas that we can share the message. And then they just drop in different languages. But the visual doesn't have to change because the visual is universal. And I don't know when words were created and how language was developed. I don't know, go back a thousand years or, or whatever that might be. But then <laughs> you think about, well, when was the visual introduced? We can go back past the ancient hieroglyphics, yes. go to cave paintings. 50,000 years ago, okay, they're drawing in caves little, you know, icons and arrows of, hey, this is how we hunt bear. You know, we go down here, we have spear, and we, you know, chase bear. And so um, that's the fascinating thing is that visuals have been around forever. Um, but very interesting question and very interesting point. I hope I answered that. And uh, how we do that in marketing is, Obviously, well, we, we develop the script, we develop that story, we develop uh, whatever message we're trying to convey, and then we have very talented artists that go in and just read the paragraph and illustrate it. So can I just interrupt you there for a moment? Because I think 
When I first started looking at working with you and developing a comic to tell our story about team performance, how do you create team performance? Mm -hmm. The what makes you me hesitant or I think a person hesitant is it seems overwhelming. Where do you start in this process? And the beautiful part was all I had to do was to explain to you what I wanted or needed the basic idea, the basic concepts, and you were able to take it from there. So would you explain to people what that process is? Because it was so simple, from my perspective, so simple. Well, thank you, yes. So um, essentially we start with a questionnaire that we send to our client to kind of get in line, kind of the story and the target audience we wanna you know, go after. No one knows your business better than you. And then what I like to say in a, in a very humbling way, no one knows how to put one of these things better than we do because we've been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really that combination working together to get the nugget of the kernel of the idea of what we want to get across. And then it's let's have fun, brainstorm what that story could be. So we all hop on a call, we'll call them kickoff copy calls. And this can be for a whiteboard animation, it can be for a business comic. Uh, it's pretty much the same. And we talk and have fun and say, well, we could have this character, we could develop that. And you know, from there, we let the writer go away and craft the script and tell the story. And then essentially we send that story to the client for approval. And they have changes and polishes that they wanna make and we make those. We don't start anything until you know, each milestone is really dialed in and, and the client's loving it. And then from there, we'll go and we'll hand that script off to our talented Disney level, I like to call artists, that then take that message and visually start begin building characters, begin building settings, begin uh, building the villains and whatnot. Um, and then we go back and we put the script we lay the script into a storyboard format, send it back to the client, and then have them approve that. Once we have that approved, then we start inking, final ink of the storyboard. Or, excuse me, if we're building out a video or a whiteboard, we then take that and illustrate it in an actual, with a camera above, the artist below, drawing out every scene, and then we take that back to the computer, merge it up with the audio file from our uh, voice talent, and uh, create a video, or continue building the comic and coloring that in, and uh, you know, adding graphics and things of that nature. And then we put that into a format, a layout, and essentially get that to our client. Now in your case, we did both. We built a comic, and then we created a marvel type of comic it was fabulous mike the little ones in my life love it <laughs> and and thank you and and so and then from there we built out that uh, really fun engaging video that told that story brought it to life i even have a cameo in there for one of my one of the voices um yeah. but it, and so you know that's kind of the the whole process from you know, soup to nuts, as we say. And, and then we send it to our client and they either hand it off to their webmaster or, you know, other people that are helping them with their marketing. So yeah, that's the, nut, the process in a nutshell. So Vince, what do you find, when is it that people tend to use something like this that's creative? I, mean, I, I think we're still so much boxed into the traditional way of using words and communicating that way. What is it that drives people to begin to look at this other modality? Yeah, great question. So, you know, for us, we've seen in our <clears throat> experience with working with folks is kind of the, the more complex the message that needs to be shared, we're all over that because we can take a complex message, boil it down to its essence, simplify it so the average Joe, Jane, and everyone else can get an understanding for what it is the business is trying to communicate. And uh, we've done well, e-learning applications now, so we're getting more into that as well because 
you think of traditional e-learning, and it's just PowerPoint, boring PowerPoint presentations that put you to sleep. And these ad tunes, you know, you can fold them into an e-learning application that really tells a story, engages the viewer, the learner. Um, so there's all kinds of different ways to kind of take that uh, methodology, if you will, and put it into different applications to get extreme benefit for. But for the most part, it's, it's taking a complex message that literally, I mean, we'll be on the phone with clients for an hour at times, and we can, you know, get that boiled down into a two to two and a half minute video that, you know, is easily shareable if you want to sell it up the chain in a, in a, in a business, it is delivering a clear, consistent message every time. You know, if, let's say you have a sales force and you have some junior folks in there, you know, they're maybe not getting the, the sales message right every time, but this, you know, is, is doing that for your company. And it's on the internet 24-7, 365, while you sleep and hang out with your family and, and do your own thing. So Vince, if somebody decides to do something like this, lead time, about how long does it take? Yeah, so uh, depending on the application, if we're, we're doing whiteboard video, it's three to four weeks. If it's building out a comic, then animating it, the comic usually takes four to five weeks, and then another three to four weeks to develop that into a video. So, so not so long. Not long at all. And, you know, most people are like, oh, that's all it takes. I thought it'd take like three months. And, and, and there's some, you know, some bigger companies that have to, you know, shop it around internally more. That can fluctuate. But, you know, if we're getting fast feedback along the way, we can knock it out. What, what do you love most about what you do? What do I love most? Um, you know, I love the ability to take my passion and use it as my profession and, and to really help businesses communicate their messages and complex messages that maybe people don't really grasp or have to keep repeating and just be a part of that process. But, you know, there's, there's two <clears throat> camps out there, right? One is uh, you can follow your passion and make it your profession. And there's others that believe that you can't, that you have to go kind of find a hungry market, give them what they want. And, you know, I love that about what we've done here at AdTunes and, and you know, super talented team behind me, but we've, we were the pioneers in the beginning. Like that's why I wrote the book, The Art of Selling Using Cartoons is I had to educate people on why you'd want to use a silly cartoon in your marketing and your communications. And uh, now, you know, there's, there's several other competitors out there, which I love because you always have to adjust and navigate the waters. Uh, but it's really being able to take my first love. Like uh, I grew up loving sports and loving art. And here I am after all these years still doing art and design. And uh, so that's really, really what I, what I enjoy about this. And, and the business is small enough where I can stamp every project that comes over my desk. Um, I could have taken it and made it a big sweatshop, and but I really love uh, just being tied to the to every project to make sure it's you know getting my seal of approval that I you know that I have and had since two thousand five when I started. So you've also started doing something a little bit new. Um, with coaching, um, your drawing coaching programs. You want to talk a little bit about that and what that involves? Sure, sure. So this is an interesting thing. Um, when I look back on the progression, the timeline of ad tunes, before I was doing ad tunes, I was coaching people, doctors, web guys, uh, lawyers who had an interest in drawing to then develop uh, just real simple graphics, and then we developed those into ad tunes. And then I was after that, I was like, well, I could be doing this myself and doing it professionally. And uh, and it's kind of circled back around. We had a Doodle Palooza day here at Ad Tunes. We brought in ten little kids, you know, from seven to fourteen, and we showed them, you know, you can make a living doing what you love 
And, and so we had them doodling and things of that nature. And I've also started Creative Genius Academy with my mentor, Matt Fury. And it's a 30 day program where we'll teach you how to kind of draw, doodle, and get more comfortable with that because uh, one thing I notice when I'm selling technology, when I'm communicating with people what I do, it would go over their heads a lot. And, and when I would you know, go to make the final close, they would say, okay, now, <clears throat> what am I getting again? And I have to go back through the whole thing, the whole presentation. But I found that if I do this, if I create, and, and, and Lois will know this as the stack, but as soon as I started doing, okay, you'll get a two and a half minute video. <laughs> Tied to that, you'll also get a 50 second highlight trailer, same content, just shorter. And then if I will we'll also take that script and build out a ebook that is a 10 to 14 page ebook. And oh, by the way, after every completed scene is done, we'll take uh, screen caps of that so you can use that on social media. Um, and, and Lo, as soon as I started doing this, people got it. And I'm not drawing anything fancy, but I'm laying out exactly what I'm giving them. And the clothes got super easy. I don't know the data on it, but this is what I use now, you know, in my sales presentations. And so, um, <clears throat> so when you think of business, when you think of communicating, and, and if you're in the camp of you're always selling someone or persuading someone to adapt an idea, the visual is so huge. And most people have this idea of, well, Vince, I, I can't even draw a straight line. And, uh, and I spoke, Lois, to my, my uh, middle daughter's kindergarten class about, I don't know, 10 years or 12 years ago. And I said, who in this room is an artist? And I, before I said, teased an artist, every hand shot up, Lois. And um, <laughs> if you were to come back a few years later, there'd be less in the class holding their hand up. Come back a few years later after that, probably one or two raised their hand. Why is that? It's because someone told them along the way you're not good enough. Or maybe I compared myself to Sally over here, and Sally's so good, I stink as an artist. Um, but uh, the, the reality is we're all born creative souls that know how to draw, know how to get in finger paint, know how to um, spread mashed potatoes around and make little designs in there. And, and so the, the idea with this is to help business owners, uh, just people in business, be able to communicate a lot more effectively with drawing and doodling and sharing with people. Because when I know, I know when I pick up a pen and I start drawing, there's something about the people in the room, just like online, and that's why we have hand drawing in most of our videos because it's super relaxing. They want to see what's going to be drawn. They want to see what's coming next. And I know I can hold an audience's attention by just drawing simple things. So if I'm talking real slow and here you're here, but you want to go here, I can hold their attention and I can keep them engaged just with the simple shapes and, and, and um, the presentation of laying everything out visually for them. So that spurred the idea to develop this program. And that's the other thing that we do is, you know, it's, it's the Creative Genius Academy. It's uh, cgaclub.com. Um, it's still in formation, but we've, we've created all the videos and we're going to be launching soon. So yeah, that's the other thing that we're in the process of helping businesses with. You know what, it's so fascinating to hear about this um, because I think one of the, uh, you know, you look at uh, neuro-linguistic programming, for example, and one of the things that they talk about is our mediums in which we take in information, touch, feeling, hearing, for, and 
the nice thing about, I think, what's visual is it brings in those sensory aspects that we tend to push aside, especially as we become more and more professionals because um, we've been taught that that's not where you go as professionals. And yet, you know, when I hand people the comic that you did, it always brings a chuckle, right? It's like, really? And, and then they take a look at it. Sure, sure. Yeah, we, we've had, um, uh, you know, we've got another client that has used the comic to, they send it out and he's marketing to doctors. And you would think like, how in the heck is, is, is a doctor gonna go through this? But it does two things, right? It, it grabs their attention. Let's say the gatekeeper gets it and, you know, they're not gonna throw it out like they're gonna throw out a brochure or a pamphlet, they're gonna look at it and be like, hey, you check this out? And so it gets up the, you know, past the gatekeeper and it delivers a message that is engaging and fun and thorough, you know? So um, he's used that to build his coaching practice and build his uh, uh, digital agency for doctors, if you will, that promotes his software. So, you know, it's, it's when you think it, it won't work for something you're working on, you know, think again, you got to give it a try and, and see every market's different. And, uh, but you know, they're a powerful way to uh, connect with individuals. So, so, you know what Vince, we have, it's hard to believe we've been talking for almost half an hour. Um, and so I just want to um, reiterate a couple of things. Um, that we've talked about that I think is so really important. And one is that to really get our message out today, there's so much clutter. We have to do it in interesting and different ways. And we also have to engage that right brain because people don't have the opportunity to do that very much. And that's one of the things that I really love about you and what you do. And so thoughts that you have, things that you, you want to leave with our audience that you want them to think about. Yeah, you know, in our world, they say, you know, people buy an emotion, they back it with logic. Well, guess what? The left brain is the logical side. And if you're not integrating the visionary side of what can be for your audience, that's the right brain. And if you're not doing that, you're missing an important element. Um, but you know the biggest thing is you know it's, it's it's challenging in corporate world to dare to be different but when you look at these companies that are going outside the the comfort zone or going outside the box i mean you look at it, it, you look at geico and what they've done with insurance you know they've created this little cartoon character that is hilarious yeah and like and not just that but every commercial they have and, and I hear a radio spot and it's really well done. It's done by Geico. And, and so you really have to get outside, think outside the box. I know it's trite, but it's scary at times in the corporate world. But, um, you know, always be testing different things that, to see which works with your audience. You never know in your husband, your wife, they can give you good feedback, friends, but it's in the end, the marketplace that's going to dictate how well, you know, an application, a campaign or um, uh, something that works. Not what I think, not what you think, not what the, you know, the neighbor thinks. And that's what I love about this is that we can continually put out different things to test and tweak and, and hone to see how well the marketplace is responding. So Vince, one of the things that um, you have shared and you've shown me because I'm always looking at ways that I can explain to people what I do. I, I have so many moving parts with what I do. And you've done some fascinating work um, explaining for companies that have moving parts, many moving parts um to help get their message out would you share some of that please sure sure so uh, one of the companies that i was a part of way back 
in my early development was a company that developed learning tools for Fortune 500 companies. And it wasn't until recently that uh, we started getting back into that niche as well. And, uh, and but doing it in a way where we're focused on the healthcare audience. And we did a lot of work with Florida Hospital, uh, Hartford Healthcare, Brigham in uh, Utah. Uh, Brigham Women's Health, I think that's on the East Coast as well. Massachusetts, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, the, you know, there's all this focus around the patient experience and making, because reimbursements now are dependent on how well a hospital's doing. If your scores are poor, they're really not going to reimburse you like you, they did before. And so it's, it's, a, it's an actual, it's really good in that, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're rewarding hospitals based on how well they're doing. Right. So uh, we teamed up with Press Ganey. Uh, if you're in the healthcare field, you understand who Press Ganey is. They developed these surveys. So if I, I won't say me, if my neighbor breaks his arm and um, uh, goes to the hospital, comes back in a few days to receive survey, how well was the care, how clean was the facility, and he'll fill that out and send it in. Right. And essentially, they didn't have... Press Ganey would get all this data back, but not, you know, tell a hospital you're 20% to goal. And the hospital would come back and say, well, okay, great, now what? <laughs> um, and so Press Ganey, until they met me and our company, Visual Guides Inc., they didn't have a way to improve those scores. So um, we developed these learning tools called Visual Guides. And essentially it walks learners from a hospital, from a big company, through a process where there's dialogue questions asked, there's a facilitator, there's little card decks that convey information of why we need to change our focus to be more patient focused and focus on the experience of the patient. And so this was done. Just to be clear, this is information for the hospital to use with their employees. Correct. Okay. Yep. Internal, internal applications. And this is a real simplified version of this that we did for Stellis, which was a pharmaceutical company. And you may think, you know, what do they care about the, the patient experience? Everyone's going there and, and it's, it, they're cutting edge putting this system, this program together to even get their pharmaceutical company thinking of a patient. So if you start in the lower left, everyone is siloed and everyone's doing their own job. And, and you know, well, how do I impact patient experience? I'm in accounting. And essentially there's through the conversation, through the dialogue, we all get on one ship going in the same direction. We have the strategy, which is, you know, making a different difference for patients and the three areas they want to focus on there, kind of driving them to this future state. And then we've got barriers and obstacles that they have to face. Well, I don't have any time. You know, I'm not given enough staff. And so they, they talk about those things with eight to 10 people around the table, sharing experiences. And it's through that shared learning that they get aha moments going off saying, okay, you know, we want to be on the leading edge. We want to have everyone focused on the patient and um and so that leads them to this future world and where you know we're working with hospitals we're working with patients payers and all these different people are our clients and we want to be um you know essentially uh working with them in a way that helps their lives and their business so you know in a nutshell that's the the methodology behind, you know, again, using a visual to create, uh, to communicate and to drive learning. Um, and that's, that's the Visual Guide Inc. Uh, business that we also have here as well. So Vince, what's been the response rate? How did the needle get moved for the hospital as a result of this process? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, it's, it's more anecdotal. Um, in terms of, I mean, when you think of this visual learning, there's, there's data that I can develop. It was first done at Cleveland Clinic. And 
I can supply data. I, I can't find it right now, but the needle did move once they rolled this out. What I can speak to is when we worked with Florida Hospital, the CEO, it, he said he just but from walking around within the first month, he could see a change in, um, you know, service behaviors, which was, you know, people putting their cell phones down in the hallway as they're walking down the hall, actually greeting people, um, letting patient families go in front of them on, in these elevators instead of them going up there because they're late for a meeting or something to that effect. Um, and he saw immediate change within that first month of rolling out this to all their employees in, in, the, in the hospital system. So, um, so it's, it's, it's super, super fun to be a part of and create and to be a part of like letting our artwork help serve patients. I mean, that's, that's another wonderful thing that, you know, uh, an outcome for us that we really, really are passionate about is helping patients improve their experience. So Vince, when you have something like this, hospitals are very complex organizations. They've got so many different leaders in a sense and um, uh, constituencies. How did you go about, what was the process that you used in developing this to get the appropriate constituencies involved? Yeah, that's a great question. So we created four design sessions over the course of three months where we'd meet with the leadership team. We'd get different people from different um, areas of the hospital. <clears throat> Obviously, the CEO has to be bought into it, and as this is a, a practice that they want to roll out and be 100% bought into, um, because if we don't have that kind of support, it's never going to go anywhere. Uh, but essentially, you start one design session where, you know, uh, more of the business developers meet and bring in an artist to kind of hear the whole story and start roughing out images. Is this your future state? Is this kind of what you would like to have? Because um, this is just one metaphor. You know, usually the patient's in the middle. And with all these different elements going on around the visual, um, and as an artist, you have to incorporate that all in. And then we just start testing it. We start getting, you know, groups, nurses, physicians, people that, you know, are in cleaning. Um, and essentially, we just start testing with different people from different areas and units. And we sit them around the table and we walk them through a test. And some information resonates, some doesn't. And, and so we'll race out different parts, change it. And so it's very iterative over three months. Then we go to the next design session, fill the group in on what happened in that first test, make any uh, modifications, still gathering data at that point to really bring the thing together. Um, and then over the course of three months, you know, at the end of that, uh, we'll do a train the trainer and then uh, they're essentially on their own to roll it out. Um, but it's very time consuming and, uh, uh, but worth it in the end when you get everyone on the same page. It's fascinating to me. And, and, you know, your ability to, in one month, have people begin to change behavior, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, especially in hospitals where you do, you have so, so many, many people. So I, I think that you, you've really discovered something here that could be incredibly useful, but it's great for organizations, large organizations, because yeah, sure. communication is fundamentally difficult. And if it's global, it's even more difficult because you have culture and language as an ad additional component. Yes, w without a doubt. And, and I was trying to pull up another sample, and I don't know if this one has it, but essentially, you know, there's, there's data points that, that shared with the audience, the learners around the table, why people choose us. Why do they choose the ED, emergency, emergency department? Why do they choose this, this area? And it's, We'll, we'll, we'll lay down cards to show them 
you know, is it cleanliness? Is it um, physicians? Is it, and, and nine times out of 10, they'll get it wrong. And so they throw their assumptions on the table of why they think people choose us. And the reality is it's, it's, it's a whole different set of reasons why they choose us. So there's a lot of learning and a lot of hot moments going on as to why we need to change and why we need to readjust our organization. So, um, but yes, very fun and, uh, and, and very effective too, just to those reasons you, you, you laid out. So you also use this as a sales tool for um, the, so when you have complex kinds of, of pieces, being able to use it to tell your story as a sales tool, which is, which is great. Yes. And uh, let me pull up one more. And then, let's see. Uh, yes. uh, so this was an application that we did for a client uh, who essentially has marketing to doctors. He has a software, kind of like ClickFunnels, if your audience is a little remotely familiar with what ClickFunnels does. Um, you know, it helps people get leads into their, their software. So many of those leads become prospects. Out of those prospects, some of the, so many of those become appointments. Out of those appointments, so many consults happen. And then we close so many of those people out of the consult. And what the software does is it essentially keeps track of how many leads we're getting, um, how many qualified, and what the sales were. And on top of that, we'll airdrop a team in here to help with the reviews and help with other things in the business to make sure it's digitally sound. And essentially a junior salesperson, senior salesperson can walk a uh, prospect through this application and get a sense for the high level, broad strokes of what the software can do. And I know this firsthand because I was at a trade show presenting this not to get doctors interested in it, just to let people know we have the service. And I had three or four doctors saying, okay, let me know what the service is. And, and right then and there it clicks like, oh, a guy who doesn't really know what is going on with this can sell this. And, and so I put those doctors in touch with my client um, in terms of getting more information on the service. But in terms of like getting someone excited, at a 30,000 foot view to understand. And most people like, when you think about explaining to them what software can do for your business, it just goes right over their head. I don't know if you would agree with that or not. Right. Uh, but that has a way of grounding everyone in, okay, leave sliding in on slides from these different sources. You know, you can just, you can create a metaphor that really connects with uh, with people and, and so we're simplifying it so that they gain understanding quicker. You know, Vince, it is so fascinating to see all these pieces and the work that you have done. And I feel like we could go on and on and on forever. So one of the things that I would like to do, if people would like to have follow up and continue to learn a little bit more, um, please let us know, contact us. There's information below where you can do that. And we will um, get in touch with Vince so that you have a way of connecting with him. Um, incredible service that we've used. And I know that you will also benefit from at least having some discussions with uh, Vince. Vince, thank you so much. You are just um, so talented and I have enjoyed so much your work. So thank you for what your contribution is to all of us. Thank you, thanks for having me on and you're a wonderful person with a great business and happy to be along with you on the journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.